Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. On October 21st, 2017, discussing the Maunder Minimum, the implications of the Maunder Minimum with respect to the sun, what we know about the sun, solar cycles, and the implications for the Grand Solar Minimum. Now, I'll leave you links to everything here. Maunder minimum, according to astronomy, an unexplained period of drastically reduced sunspot activity that occurred between 1645 and 1715. Well, we now have kind of a grasp on the explanation of these minimums. And... We'll, we won't get into that tonight, but it has to do with the heartbeat of the sun and the waxing and waning energetic patterns that the sun has. Wow, 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 wow. And the pattern has been studied by Zarkov, and they published the heartbeat of the sun paper, which shows this pattern and where we are in the pattern and where we are going into the Maunder Minimum section of the pattern. Now, the Maunder Minimum, sunspot activity waxes and wanes with a roughly 11-year cycle, the solar cycle, and it changes between around like nine and a half years to 11 plus years, if you go look at them. In 1894, the English astronomer Edward Walter Maunder pointed out that very few sunspots had been observed between 1645 and 1715, and you can read about why the Maunder Minimum was named. Now, the Maunder Minimum coincided with the coldest part of the Little Ice Age. Now, the Little Ice Age, uh, you can see in a lot of my graphs, with, is uh, a very long period of time. It's an entire, almost 400-year cycle of cold. Now, why is that important here? So I want to describe to you here the significance of this particular graph here, which you'll, I'll leave a link to it. Um, this is the wiki on the Maunder Minimum. So here's the graph. And this is sunspot numbers here. And this is the temperature anomaly, 1654 to 1800. And then here we are with the another temperature anomaly smoothed. And you can see clearly the cooling here in the Dalton minimum. And then it goes above baseline here to around 1730. And then it falls below baseline, which would be the Maunder minimum here. Now, these kind of line up. That's why they're doing this. So you can see that a drop in sunspots here that happened during the Dalton minimum also coincides with a huge drop in global temperature anomaly in both graphs. So there's a direct relationship between the number of sunspots and the temperature. And then during the Maunder minimum here, this temperature falls way below baseline here. Look at how low this spike goes, coinciding probably with this area below baseline in here. Folks, we're headed into a below baseline area in just a few years, and we're going to stay there for decades. And that's what's significant. I'll leave you links to what will happen during a new Maunder minimum. What was the Maunder minimum? Scholarly articles on cosmic rays and climate. And let's get a close up here. Now what you're looking at here is a paper called 9400 Years of Cosmic Radiation and Solar Activity from Ice Cores and Tree Rings. Now before we get into this, I quick want to describe to you what the purpose of this discussion is. What has been determined in the last decade is there's an amazing correlation between galactic cosmic ray flux increase on the surface of the planet during solar minimums. This is proven. And it 
the work of Svensmark was suppressed because of the global warming scare and recently has been accepted that cosmic rays cause increased cloud nucleation. And this work was proven, the cloud experiment at CERN. So we now know from peer-reviewed scientists all over the world that increased cosmic ray flux causes increased cloud nucleation and more precipitation in the form of catastrophic flooding and rain events. And folks, this is 13% in the last two years, and the prediction is for 19% in the next year, and it is going to continue to increase. I have a video on this several months ago. Within 10 years, the cosmic ray flux on the planet may be dangerous to walk on the surface. So if we come back to this 9,400 years of cosmic radiation and solar activity from cores and tree rings, I'll leave you a link to this. I want to get to this graph. So what this data set is showing you, time, years before present, zero, back 10,000 years to the end of the last ice age there when sea levels rose during the Great Flood. And I want to show you the amazing correlation here. So here's cosmic ray intensity up here. And then there's a smooth graph right below it. See? And then here, let's focus in on this graph. So this is the sunspot cycles every 11 years. And you can see we're trending downwards into the grand solar minimum, similar to a time back here. And we're entering into a Dalton minimum currently. And this green line represents better data than in the past. But the blue line represents cosmic ray flux. So you can see high flux here at D during the Dalton minimum cause happened at low sunspot numbers. And high cosmic ray flux at G during the Glassberg minimum cause low sunspot numbers. And high, super high cosmic ray flux here during the Maunder minimum cause extremely low sunspot numbers. And if you could see where the green is here, and if you can add 20%, we're already at the Glassberg and Dalton minimum levels currently. And we're at a very low sunspot number. Cycle 24, it barely got above 75. I'll do another video on that. I'm going to do a lot of explanatory videos so I can walk you through this. And this is predicted to increase above levels never seen before in recent history. Above this level is predicted in two decades, which will mean the cooling could be more severe than the Maunder minimum. But the cosmic ray flux will certainly be dangerous for flying in airplanes and astronauts alike. And the northern latitudes. So the higher you get towards the North Pole or the South Pole, the more dangerous the cosmic ray flux will become. So I hope it gave you a little insight on cosmic ray flux. High flux during low sunspot numbers. Low spot sunspot numbers, high cosmic ray flux equals flooding, increased clouds and cooling. And we have the correlations and the data going back 10,000 years. Come check it out. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. If you have any questions, leave it down in the uh, comment section. We're going into an extremely high cosmic ray flux. Just in the next two years, it's going to increase above the Dalton minimum levels with sunspot numbers below Dalton minimum solar cycle numbers. It's a heads up. Be safe.